ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والأرض لا إله إلا هو فأنا تؤفكون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إِنَّ الَّذِي لَيْسَ فِي جَوْفِهِ شَيْءٌ مِّنَ الْقُرْآنِ كَالْبَيْتِ الْخَرِيبِ أَمَّا بَعْدِ Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters in Islam. Welcome back to today's session. Alhamdulillah. Today we will be reading the 16th juz of the Qur'an, the translation of it. We will be starting straight away insha'Allah ta'ala from Surah Al-Kahf. We are basically in the middle of Surah Al-Kahf. Uh, starting off with the story of Musa alayhi interaction with Al-Khadir. Or uh, Al Khidr, uh, Alihim as Salam. Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Audi Bilahim and Shaytan in Rajim, Bismillah in Rahman in Rahim. With Kalamu Sali Feta Hula Aba Rahu Hatta Aba Lura Majama al Bahraini, O Amdia Hukuba. And remember when Moses said to his young assistant, I will never give up until I reach the junction of the two seas, even if I travel for ages. But when they finally reached the point where the seas met, they forgot their salted fish and it made its way into the sea, slipping away wondrously. When they had passed further, he said to his assistant, bring us our meal. We have certainly been exhausted by today's journey. He replied, do you remember when we rested by the rock? That is when I forgot the fish. None made me forget to mention this except Satan. And the fish made its way into the sea miraculously. Moses responded, that is exactly what we were looking for. So they returned, retracing their footsteps. There they found a servant of ours to whom we had granted mercy from us and enlightened with knowledge of our own. Moses said to him, May I follow you, provided that you teach me some of the right guidance you have been taught. He said, You certainly cannot be patient enough with me. And how can you be patient with what is beyond your realm of knowledge? Moses assured him, you will find me patient, Allah willing, and I will not disobey any of your orders. He responded then, if you follow me, do not question me about anything until I myself clarify it for you. So they set out, but after they had boarded a ship, the man made a hole in it. Moses protested, have you done this to drown its people? You have certainly done a terrible thing. He replied, did I not say that you cannot have patience with me? Moses pleaded, excuse me for forgetting and do not be hard on me. So they processed. So they proceeded until they came across a boy, and the man killed him. Moses protested, have you killed an innocent soul who killed no one? You have certainly done a horrible thing. He answered, did I not tell you that you cannot have patience with me? Moses replied, if I ever question you about anything after this, then do not keep me in your company, for by then I would have, been, uh, for, for by then I would have given you enough of an excuse. So they moved on until they came to the people of a town. They asked them for good, but the people refused to give them hospitality. There they found a wall ready to collapse, so the man set it right. Moses protested, if you wanted, you could have demanded a fee for this. He replied, this is the parting of our ways. I will explain to you what you could not bear patiently. As for the ship, it belonged to some poor people working at sea, so I intended to damage it. But there was a tyrant king ahead of them who seizes every good ship by force. And as for the boy... His parents were true believers and we feared that he would pressure them into defiance and disbelief. So we hoped that their Lord would give them another more virtuous and caring in his place. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city and under the wall was a treasure that belonged to them and their father had been a righteous man. So your Lord willed that these children should come of age and retrieve their treasure as a mercy from your Lord. I did not do it all on my own. This is the explanation, explanation of what you could not bear patiently. They ask you, O Prophet, about Dhul Qarnain. Say, I will relate to you something of his narrative. 
Surely we established him in the land and gave him the means to all things. So he traveled a course until he reached the setting point of the sun, which appeared to him to be setting in a spring of murky water, where he found some people. We said, O Dhul Qarnayn, either punish them or treat them kindly. He responded, whoever does wrong will be punished by us. Then it will be returned to their Lord, who will punish them with a horrible torment. As for those who believe and do good, they will have the finest reward and we will assign them easy commands. Then he traveled a different course until he reached the rising point of the sun. He found it rising on a people for whom we had provided no shelter from it. So it was, and we truly had full knowledge of him. Then he traveled a third course until he reached a pass between two mountains. Something I forget to men- forgot to mention in the beginning of this one is that this is all brought to you by Quranly, and I forgot to put this on the screen as well. Uh, this is uh, the app. Alhamdulillah, we're reading. I'm reading from the Quranly app. It's a habit building Quran app, so do check the app out, inshallah Taala, and you can start uh, building your habit with reading the Quran, inshallah Taala. Until he reached a pass between two mountains, he found in front of them a people who could hardly understand his language. They pleaded. O Dhul Qarnayn, surely Gog and Magog are spreading corruption throughout the land. Should we pay you tribute, provided that you build a wall between us and them? He responded, what my Lord has provided for me is far better, far better. But assist me with resources and I will build a barrier between you and them. Bring me blocks of iron. Then when he had filled up the gap between the two mountains, he ordered blow. When the iron became red hot, he said, bring me molten copper to pour over it. And so the enemies could neither scale nor tunnel through it. He declared, this is a mercy from my Lord. But when the promise of my Lord comes to pass, he will level it to the ground. And my Lord's promise is ever true. On that day, we will set them surge like waves, one, uh, like waves over one another. Later, the trumpet will be blown and we will gather all people together. On that day, we will display hell clearly for the disbelievers. Those who turned a blind eye to my reminder and could not stand listening to it. Do the believers think they can simply take my servants as lords instead of me? We have surely prepared hell as an accommodation for the disbelievers. Say, O Prophet, shall we inform you of who will will lose the most deeds? They are those whose efforts are in vain in this worldly life, while they think they are doing good. It is they who reject the signs of their Lord and their meeting with him rendering their deeds void, so we will not give their deeds any weight on judgment day. That is their reward, hell, for their disbelief and mockery of my signs and messengers. Indeed, those who believe and do good will have the gardens of paradise as an accommodation, where they will be forever, never desiring anywhere else. Say, O Prophet, if the ocean were ink for writing, the words of my Lord, it would certainly... Say, O Prophet... If the ocean were ink for writing the words of my Lord, it would certainly run out before the words of my Lord were finished, even if we refilled it with its equal. Say, O Prophet, I am only a man like you, but it has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. So whoever hopes for the meeting with their Lord, let them do good deeds and associate none in the worship of their Lord. Alhamdulillah, we are now on Surah Maryam. The chapter of the Quran titled Surah Maryam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كاف ها يا عين صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا كاف ها يا كاف ها يا عين صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا. This is a reminder of your Lord's mercy to his servant Zakaria when he cried out to his Lord privately, saying, My Lord, surely my bones have become brittle and gray hair has spread across my head. 
but I have never been disappointed in my prayer to you, my Lord. And I am concerned about the faith of my relatives after me, since my wife is barren, so grant me by your grace an heir, who will inherit prophethood from me and the family of Jacob, and make him, O Lord, pleasing to you. The angels announced, O Zechariah, indeed we give you the good news of the birth of a son, whose name will be John, a name we have not given to anyone before. He wondered, my Lord, how can I have a son when my wife is barren and I have become extremely old? An angel replied, so will it be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me, just as I created you before when you were nothing. Zechariah said, my Lord, grant me a sign. He responded, your sign is that you will not be able to speak to people for three nights despite being healthy. So he came up to his people from the sanctuary signaling to them to glorify Allah morning and evening. It was later said, O John, Hold firmly to the scriptures, and we granted him wisdom while he was still a child, and as well as purity and compassion from us, and he was God-fearing and kind to his parents. He was neither arrogant nor disobedient. Peace be upon him the day he was born and the day of his death and the day he will be raised back to life. I mentioned in the book, O oh, Prophet, the story of Mary, when she withdrew from her family to, to a place in the east, screening herself off from them. Then we sent to her our angel Gabriel, appearing before her as a man perfectly formed. She appealed, I truly seek refuge in the most compassionate from you, so leave me alone if you are God-fearing. He responded, I am only a messenger from your Lord, sent to bless you with a pure son. She wondered, how can I have a son when no man has ever touched me, nor am I unchaste? He replied, so will it be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. And so... We will make him a sign for humanity and a mercy from us. It is a matter already decreed. So she conceived him and withdrew with him to a remote place. Then the pains of labor drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She cried, Alas, I wish I had died before this and was a thing long forgotten. So a voice reassured her from below her, Do not grieve, your Lord has provided a stream at your feet. And shake the trunk of this palm tree towards you, it will drop fresh ripe dates upon you. So eat and drink and put your heart at ease. But if you see any of the people, say I have vowed silence to the most compassionate, so I am not talking to anyone today. Then she returned to her people carrying him. They said in shock, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a horrible thing. O oh sister of Aaron, your father was not an indecent man, nor was your mother unchaste. So she pointed to the baby they exclaimed, how can we talk to someone who is an infant in the cradle? Jesus declared, I am truly a servant of Allah. He has destined me to, to he, he has destined me to be given the scripture and to be a prophet. He has made me a blessing wherever I go and bid me to establish prayer and give alms tax as long as I live. And to be kind to my mother, he has not made me arrogant or defiant. Peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I will be raised back to life. That is Jesus, son of Mary, and this is a word of truth about which they dispute. It is not for Allah to take a son, glory be to him. When he decrees a matter, he simply tells it be, and it is. Jesus also declared, surely Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him alone. This is the straight path. Yet their various groups have differed among themselves about him, so woe to the disbelievers when they face a tremendous day. How clearly will they hear and see on the day they will come to us? But today the wrongdoers are clearly astray. And warn them, O prophet, of the day of regret, when all matters will be settled, while they are engrossed in heedlessness and disbelief. Indeed, it is we who will succeed the earth and whoever is on it, and to us they will all be returned. I mention in the book, O prophet, the story of Abraham. He was surely a man of truth and a prophet. When he said, remember when he said to his father, Oh dear father, why do you worship that? Why, why, do you, why do you worship what can neither hear nor see nor benefit you at all? Oh dear father, I have certainly received some knowledge which you have not received. So follow me and I will guide you to the straight path. Oh dear father, do not worship Satan. Surely Satan is ever rebellious against the most compassionate. Oh dear father, I truly fear that you will be touched by torment from the most compassionate and become Satan's companion in hell. He threatened, How dare you reject my idols, O Abraham? If you do not desist, I will certainly stone you to death. So be gone from me for a long time. 
Abraham responded, Peace be upon you. I will pray to my Lord for your forgiveness. He has truly been gracious, most gracious to me. As I distance myself from all of you and from whatever you invoke besides Allah, I will continue to call upon my Lord alone, trusting that I will never be disappointed in invoking my Lord. So after he had left them and what they worshipped besides Allah, we granted him Isaac and Jacob and made each of them a prophet. And show we showered them with our mercy and blessed them with honourable mention. I mentioned in the book of Prophet the story of Moses, he was truly a chosen man and was a messenger and a prophet. We called him from the right side of Mount Tur and drew him near, speaking with him directly. And we appointed for him out of our grace his brother Aaron as a prophet. I mentioned in the book of Prophet the story of Ishmael, he was truly a man of his word and was a messenger and a prophet. He used to urge his people to pray and give alms tax, and his Lord was well pleased with him. I mentioned in the book, O Prophet, the story of Enoch, and this Idris, he was surely a man of truth and a prophet, and we elevated him to an honorable status. Those were some of the prophets who Allah has blessed from among the descendants of Adam, and of those we carried with Noah in the ark, and of the descendants of Abraham and Israel. Israel, by the way, Israel is one of the names of Ya'qub alayhi salam. Ya'qub. So Israel, when you see Israel, Dhurriyati Ibrahim wa Israel. Israel is Ya'qub alayhi salam. And of those we rightly guided and chose. Whenever the revelations of the most compassionate were recited to them, they fell down prostrating and weeping. But they were succeeded by generations who neglected prayer and followed their lusts. And so will soon face the evil consequences. As for those who repent, believe and do good, it is they who will be admitted into paradise, never being denied any reward. They will be in the gardens of eternity, promised in trust by the most compassionate to his servants. Surely his promise will be fulfilled. There they will never hear any idle talk, only greetings of peace. And there they will have their provisions morning and evening. That is paradise, which we will grant to whoever is devout among our servants. We only descend by the command of your Lord. To him belongs whatever is before us and whatever is behind us and everything in between. And your Lord is, ev and your Lord is never forgetful. He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. So worship him alone and be steadfast in his worship. So and be steadfast in his worship. Do you know of anyone equal to him in his attributes? Yet some people ask mockingly, after I die, will I really be raised to life again? Do such people not remember that we created them before when they were nothing? By your Lord, O Prophet, we will surely gather them along with the devils and then set them around hell on their knees. Then we will certainly begin by dragging out every group the ones most defiant to the most compassionate. And we truly know best who is most deserving of burning in it. There is none of you who will not pass over it. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. Then we will deliver those who are devout, leaving the wrongdoers there on their knees. When our clear revelations are recited to them, the disbelievers ask the believers mockingly, which of the two of us is better in status and superior in assembly? Imagine, O oh Prophet, how many peoples we have destroyed before them who are far better in luxury and splendor. Say, O oh Prophet, whoever is entrenched in misguidance, the most compassionate will allow them plenty of time until, behold, they face what they are threatened with, either the torment of the hour or the hour. Only then will they realize who is worse in position and inferior in manpower. And Allah increases in guidance those who are rightly guided. And the everlasting good deeds are far better with your Lord in reward and in outcome. Have you seen our prophet, the one who rejects our revelations, yet boasts, I will definitely be granted plenty of wealth and children if there is an afterlife? Has he looked into the unseen or taken a pledge from the most compassionate? Not at all. We certainly record whatever he claims and will increase his punishment extensively. And we will inherit what he boasts of and he will come before us all by himself. They have taken other gods instead of Allah, seeking strength and protection through them. But no, those gods will deny their worship and turn against them. Do you, O Prophet, not see that we have sent the devils against the disbelievers, constantly inciting them? So do not be haste in 
so do not be in haste against them, for indeed we are closely counting their, down their days. Watch for the day we will gather the righteous before the most compassionate as an honored delegation and drive the wicked to hell like a thirsty herd. None will have the right to intercede except those who have taken a covenant from the most compassionate. They say the most compassionate has offspring. You have certainly made an outrageous claim by which the heavens are about to burst, the earth to split apart and the mountains to crumble to pieces in, process, in protest of attributing children to the most compassionate. It does not befit the majesty of the most compassionate to have children. There is none in the heavens or, uh, or the earth who will not return to the most compassionate in full submission. Indeed, he fully knows them and has counted them precisely. And each of them will return to him on the day of judgment all alone. As for those who believe and do good, the most compassionate will certainly bless them with genuine love. Indeed, we have made this Qur'an easy in your own language of profit, so with it you may give good news to the righteous and warn those who are contentious. Imagine how many peoples we have destroyed before them. Do you still see any of them or even hear from them the slightest sound? Alhamdulillah, we have completed Surah Maryam, the translation of it. Now we will begin Surah Taha. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طه ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى طه we have not revealed the Quran we have not revealed the Quran to you or prophet to cause you distress إلا تذكرة لمن يخشى but as a reminder to those in awe of Allah تنزيلا ممن خلق الأرض والسماوات العلا It is a revelation from the one who created the earth and the high heavens الرحمن على العرش استوى The most compassionate who is established on the throne له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وما بينهما وما تحت الثراء To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth and whatever is in between, and whatever is underground. Whether you speak openly or not, he certainly knows what is secret and what is even more hidden. Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except him. He has the most beautiful names. Has the story of Moses reached you, O Prophet? When he saw a fire, he said to his family, Wait here, for I have spotted a fire. Perhaps I can bring you a torch from it, or find some guidance at the fire. But when he approached it, he was called, O Moses. It is truly I, I am your Lord, so take off your sandals, for you are in the sacred valley of Tuwa. I have chosen you, so listen to what is revealed. It is truly I, I am Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except me, so worship me alone and establish prayer for my remembrance. The hour is sure to come, my will is to keep it hidden, so that every soul may be rewarded according to their efforts. So do not let those who disbelieve in it and follow their desires distract you from it, or you will be doomed. Allah added, And what is that in your right hand, O Moses? He replied, It is my staff. I lean on it, and with it I beat down branches for my sheep and have other uses for it. Allah said, Throw it down, O Moses. So he did. Then behold, it became a serpent, slithering. Allah said, Take it and have no fear. We will return it to its former state. And put your hand under your armpit, it will come out shining, white, unblemished, as another sign. So that we may show you some of our greatest signs. Go to Pharaoh, for he has truly transgressed all bounds. Moses prayed, My Lord, uplift my heart for me, and make my task easy, and remove the impediment from my tongue, so people may understand my speech, and grant me a helper for my family. Harun, my brother, strengthen me through him. And let him share my task, so that we may glorify you much, and remember you much. For truly you have always been overseeing us. Allah responded, All that you requested has been granted, O Moses. And surely we had shown you favor before, when we inspired your mother with this. Put him into a chest, then put it into the river. The river will wash it ashore, and he will be taken. And he will be taken by, and he will be taken by Pharaoh and any of me of my, an enemy of mine and his. And I blessed you with lovability from me, O Moses, so that you would be brought up under my watchful eye. Remember when your sister came along and proposed, shall I direct you to someone who will nurse him? 
So we reunited you with your mother so that her heart would be put at ease and she would not grieve. Later, you killed a man by mistake, but we saved you from sorrow as well as other tests we put you through. Then you stayed for a number of years among the people of Madian. Then you came here as a predestined. O oh Moses, and I have selected you for my service. Go forth, you and your brother, with my signs, and never falter in remembering me. Go, both of you, to Pharaoh, for he has truly transgressed all bounds. Speak to him gently, so perhaps he may be mindful of me, or fearful of my punishment. They both pleaded, Our Lord, we fear that he may be quick to harm us or act ty tyrannically. Allah reassured them, Have no fear, I am with you, hearing and seeing. So go to him and say, Indeed, we are both messengers from your Lord. So let the children of Israel go with us and do not oppress them. We have come to you with a sign from your Lord and salvation will be for whoever follows the right guidance. It has indeed been revealed to us that the punishment will be upon whoever denies the truth and turns away. Pharaoh asked, Who then is the Lord of you two, O Moses? He answered, Our Lord is the one who has given everything its distinctive form, then guided it. Pharaoh asked, and what about previous peoples? He replied, that knowledge is with my Lord in a record. My Lord neither falters nor forgets anything. He is the one who has laid out the earth for all of you and set it in pathways for you and sends down rain from the sky, causing various types of plants to grow. So eat and graze your cattle. Surely in this are signs for people of sound judgment. From the earth we created you and into it we will return you and from it we will bring you back again. And we certainly showed Pharaoh all of our signs, but he denied them and refused to believe. He said, have you come to drive us out of our land with your magic, O Moses? We can surely meet you with similar magic. So set for us an appointment that neither us will fail to keep, that neither of us will fail to keep in a central place. Moses said, your appointment is on the day of the festival and let the people be gathered mid-morning. Pharaoh then withdrew, orchestrated his scheme, then returned. Moses warned the magi uh, Moses, uh, Moses warned the magicians, "Woe to you! Do not fabricate a lie against Allah, or He will wipe out, or He will wipe you out with a torment. Whoever fabricates lies is bound to fail." So the magicians disputed the matter among themselves, conversing privately. They concluded, "These two are only magicians who want to drive you out of your land with their magic, and do away with your most cherished." Traditions. So orchestrate your plan, then come forward in perfect ranks, and whoever prevails today will certainly be successful. They said, O oh Moses, either you cast or let us be the first to cast. Moses responded, No, you go first. And suddenly their ropes and staffs appeared to him by their magic to be slithering. So Moses concealed fear within himself. We reassured him, Do not fear. It is certainly you who will prevail. Cast what is in your right hand, and it will swallow up what they have made. For what they have made is no more than a magic trick, and magicians can never succeed wherever they go. So the magicians fell down in prostration, declaring, We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. Pharaoh threatened, How dare you believe in him before I give you permission? He must be your master who taught you magic. I will certainly cut off your hands and feet on opposite sides and crucify you on the trunks of palm trees. You will really see whose punishment is more severe and more lasting. They responded, "By the one who created us, we will never prefer you over the clear proofs that have come to, that have come to us. So do whatever you want. Your authority only co covers the fleeting life of this world. Indeed, we have believed in our Lord, so He may forgive our sins and that magic you have forced us to practice. And Allah is far superior in reward and more lasting in punishment." Whoever comes to their Lord as an evildoer, whoever comes to their Lord as an evildoer will certainly have hell where they can neither live nor die. But whoever comes to him as a believer, having done good, they will have the highest ranks. The gardens of eternity under which rivers flow, where they will stay forever, that is the reward of those who purify themselves. And we surely inspired Moses saying, Leave with my servants at night and strike a dry passage for them across the sea. Have no fear of being overtaken, nor be concerned of drowning. Then Pharaoh pursued them with his soldiers, but how overwhelming were the waters that submerged them. 
And so Pharaoh led his people astray and did not guide them rightly. O children of Israel, we saved you from your enemy and made an appointment with you on the right side of Mount Tur and sent down to you manna wa salwa. That's manna and quails, saying, eat from the good things we have provided for you and do not transgress in them or my wrath will befall you. And whoever my wrath befalls is certainly doomed. But I am truly most forgiving to whoever repents, believes and does good, then persists on true guidance. Allah asked, why have you come with such haste ahead of your people, O Moses? He replied, they are close on my tracks and I have hastened to you, my Lord, so you will be pleased. Allah responded, we have, we have indeed tested your people in your absence and the Samiri has led them astray. So Moses returned to his people furious and sorrowful. He said, O oh my people, had your Lord not made you a good promise? Has my absence been too long for you? Or have you wished for wrath from your Lord to befall you? So you broke your promise to me. They argued we did not break our promise to you of our own free will, but we were made to carry the burden of the people's golden jewelry. Then we threw it into the fire, and so did the Samiri. Then he molded for them an idol of a calf that made a lowing sound. They said, this is your God and the God of Moses, but Moses forgot where it was. Did they not see that it, that it did not respond to them, nor could it protect or benefit them? Aaron had already warned them beforehand, all oh, my people, you are only being tested by this, for indeed your one true Lord is the most compassionate. So follow me and obey my orders. They replied, we will not cease to worship it until Moses returns to us. Moses scolded his brother, O oh Aaron, what prevented you when you saw them going astray from following after me? How could you disobey my orders? Aaron pleaded, O oh son of my mother, do not seize me by my beard or the hair of my head. I really feared that you would say you have caused division among the children of Israel and did not observe my word. Moses then asked, what did you think you were doing, O oh Samiri? He said, I saw what they did not see, so I took a handful of dust from the hoof prints of the horse of the messenger angel uh, Gabriel, then cast it on the molded calf. This is what my lower self tempted me into. Moses said, go away then, and for the rest of your life you will surely be crying. Do not touch me, then you will certainly have a, certainly have a fate that you cannot escape. Now look at your God to which you have been devoted. We will burn it up then scatter it in the sea completely. Then Moses addressed his people. Your only God is Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except him. He encompasses everything in his knowledge. This is how we relate to you, O Prophet, some of the stories of the past. And we have certainly granted you a reminder from us. Whoever turns away from it will surely bear the burden, bear the burden of sin on the day of judgment, suffering its consequences forever. What an evil burden they will carry on judgment day. Beware of the day the trumpet will be blown and we will gather the wicked on that day, blue-faced from horror and thirst. They will whisper among themselves, you stayed no more than 10 days on the earth. We know best what they will say. The most reasonable of them will say, you stayed no more than a day. And if they ask you a prophet about the mountains, then say, my Lord will wipe them out completely, leaving the earth level and bare, with, ne with neither depressions nor elevations to be seen. On that day, all will follow the caller for assembly and none will dare to deviate. All, all voices will be hushed before the compassionate. Only whispers will be heard. On that day, no intercession will be of any benefit except by those granted permission by the most compassionate and whose words are agreeable to him. He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them, but they cannot encompass him in their knowledge. And all faces will be humbled before the ever-living, all-sustaining, and those burdened with wrongdoings, and those burdened with wrongdoing will be in loss. But whoever does good and is a believer will have no fear of being wronged or denied their Lord, their reward, or denied their reward. And so we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran and varied the warnings in it. So perhaps they will shun evil or may cause them, or it may cause them to be mindful. Exalted is Allah, the true king. Do not rush to recite a revelation of the Quran or prophet before it is properly conveyed to you and pray, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And indeed, we once made a covenant with Adam, but he forgot, and so we did not find determination in him. And remember, and remember when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, 
They all did, but not Iblis, who refused arrogantly. So we cautioned, O Adam, this is surely an enemy to you and to your wife, so do not let him drive you both out of paradise for you. For, for, so do not let him drive him out of paradise, for you, O Adam, would then suffer hardship. Here it is grand, guaranteed that you will never go hungry or unclothed, nor will you ever suffer from thirst or the sun's heat. But Satan whispered to him, saying, O Adam, shall I show you the tree of immor 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 immortality and a kingdom that does not fade away? So they both ate from the tree and then their nakedness was exposed to them, prom prompting them to cover themselves with leaves from paradise. So Adam disobeyed his Lord and so lost his way. Then his Lord chose him for his grace, accepted his repentance and guided him rightly. Allah said, descend both of you from here together with Satan as enemies to each other. Then when guidance comes to you from me, Whoever follows my guidance will neither go astray in this life nor, nor suffer in the next. But whoever turns away from my reminder will certainly have a miserable life. Then we will raise them up blind on the day of judgment. They will cry, my Lord, why have you raised me up blind? Although I used to see. Allah will respond, it is so. Just as our revelations came to you and you neglected them, so today you are neglected. This is how we reward whoever transgresses and does not believe in the revelations of their Lord. And the punishment of the hereafter is far more severe and more lasting. Is it not yet clear to them how many peoples we destroyed before them, whose ruins they still pass by? Surely in this are signs for people of sound judgment. Had it not been for a prior decree from your Lord, had it not been from had it not been for a prior decree from your Lord or Prophet, and a term already set, their instant doom would have been inevitable. So be patient, O Prophet with what they say and glorify the praises of your Lord before sunrise and before sunset and glorify him in the hours of the night and at both ends of the day so that you may be pleased with the reward. Do not let your eyes crave what we have allowed some of the disbelievers to enjoy, the fleeting splendor of this worldly life which we test them with, but your Lord's provision in the hereafter is far better and more lasting. Bid your people to pray and be diligent in observing it. We do not ask you to provide. It is we who provide for you. And the ultimate outcome is only for the people of righteousness. They demand if only he could bring us a sign from his Lord. Have they not already received the confirmation of what is in earlier scriptures? Had we destroyed them with a torment before this prophet came, they would have surely argued our Lord. If only you had sent us a messenger, we would have followed your revelations before being humiliated and put to shame. Say to them, O Prophet, each of you, each of us is waiting, so keep waiting. You will soon know who is on the straight path and is rightly guided. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We have completed the translation of Juz number uh, Juz number uh, 16. Alhamdulillah. Tomorrow we will begin from Surah al Anbiya, as you can see on the screen. Brothers and sisters, this is all brought to you by Quranly, the Quranly app. Do check the app out, inshallah. Um, it's a habit building Quran app. You can download it, inshallah. And if you can't afford it, by the way, uh, there's an I can't afford it option. If you can't afford it, you can just click I can't afford it and you'll get the app for free, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, uh, we leave today's session at that. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.